British Columbia has a cholera outbreak on their hands. Their medieval-style public sanitation standards have hospitalized more people than Kinder Morgan's pipeline ever has. BC has an outbreak of cholera happening on Vancouver Island. Medical officials say at least four people have contracted the illness after eating herring eggs harvested on the coast of Vancouver Island. Cholera is as gross as you probably think it is. It causes nausea, vomiting and diarrhea that can lead to extreme dehydration, even death. Cholera may be passed from person to person, but it's usually contracted from bacteria in food or water sources infected with fecal matter. This isn't cholera that was contracted in one of the places in the world that still has it, like Haiti or Africa or Southeast Asia. No, this outbreak is homegrown, it's all ours. Hidden way down near the end of a CTV article mixed in with the usual excuses about climate change is the truth. Our oceans are a valuable resource for food, travel, recreation, and they're under pressures from sewage, from boat traffic, and from rising temperatures. Our health is connected to the oceans, and I think this is a sign of that. Now that quote is from Island Health Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Shannon Waters. But it's not climate change, is it? Unless climate change caused the last cholera outbreak in Canada in the 1800s, that outbreak caused about 20,000 deaths. No, it's the sewage BC keeps dumping into their oceans. That's right, BC dumps their raw sewage right into the very same whale habitats they say a pipeline could harm if a pipeline ever spills there. Victoria, BC, as of 2016, discharges 82 million litres of sewage into the ocean every single day, untreated but apparently screened. And 100 years of using the Pacific Ocean as a toilet is taking its toll. In fact, BC's public health agencies really should have seen this problem coming since it's been fomenting like an outhouse for decades. BC has had ongoing problems with coliform, or the E. coli bacteria, on their beaches since at least the 1960s. The National Post article says signs warning about sewage started popping up on 28 beaches in the mid to late 1960s. Then there have been elevated coliform levels detected on BC beaches and swimming areas for at least the last decade that makes swimming and recreational boating a little bit dangerous. At one point, frustrated Vancouver Island residents formed an advocacy group called People Opposed to Outflow Pollution, or POOP, and they adopted a turd-shaped mascot named Mr. Floaty to draw attention to the actual pollution they have to live with on their coastlines. And BC likes to say it isn't all that bad because they screen for solids like that matters. But in 2015, that screening system failed and 3 million litres of unscreened, untreated sewage discharged into Clover Point. Imagine if 3 million litres of oil had poured into Clover Point. Imagine the outcry. And this has me worried about Quebec. They too, for all their anti-oil posturing, keep dumping their untreated effluent into their waterways with the full consent of Canada's climate crusading earth muffin environment minister, Catherine McKenna. We know Quebec's marine sewage dumps have caused massive fish kills. How long until they cause a human death from cholera or some black plague era disease. Now, I'd love to build a pipeline through these Quebec towns so that they could use some of the extra property tax revenue to stave off E. coli and dysentery and people who just want to fish and swim and boat in their local rivers. BC uses their coastline as a weapon against any fossil fuel development. They use the threat of any potential oil spill, no matter how potentially small or unlikely, as a means to block any development. Any threat is just too great of a threat then, except a third world disease is now rearing its ugly fecal soaked head in British Columbia because they are in reality, in all practical senses, such terrible stewards of their coastlines. Instead of protesting against state of the art pipelines, if the BC environmentalist left actually cared about the oceans or the whales or whatever shield against Alberta they've picked up against us today, they should be protesting down at the Ministry of Health or down at the Public Works Office to get the province to bring beautiful British Columbia's public health into at least the 19th century. But if you've ever seen an anti-pipeline protest encampment, 
you'd know sanitation isn't exactly high on their list of priorities. For the Rebel.media, I'm Sheila Gunry. Guys, bad news, fake news is everywhere, but the good news is so are we. We have a brand new Rebel Media app. You can get it on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. Download it, give it a whirl, and take the other side of the story with you wherever you go.